Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA tutorial. In this part of the series we're going to explain how application level events work. We'll begin the video with a quick recap of workbook and worksheet events before we move on and show you how you can access the application level event which is a little bit trickier to do. We'll focus on one particular example of an application level event called the new workbook event and this is triggered every single time you begin a brand new blank workbook in Excel. Once we've written some code to handle that event, we'll then move on and show you how you can enable the application level events. And the final part of the video will quickly show you how you can use a class module, just to make the whole system a little bit neater and tidier. So it's not a very long video, but let's get started. In a previous video in this series, we talked about how to use workbook and worksheet events to trigger code automatically as users naturally work in your workbooks. So as a very brief recap as to how that works, imagine for instance I wanted something to happen every time a user inserts a new sheet into this workbook. I can use the new sheet event of the workbook object to achieve that. So to make it work I'll need to go back to the VB editor, which I can do again of course either from the developer tab and the visual basic button or by pressing Alt and F11 on the keyboard. And then in the VB editor I need to identify which object contains the events that I want to access. So the new sheet event is attached to the this workbook object, so if I double click on that object I'll get a code page associated with the this workbook. I can then use the drop down list at the top of the code page to select the appropriate object and then the appropriate event. So using the drop down list at the top left hand corner first of all there should only be one choice in there at this point which is the workbook object. As soon as I choose an object, it then provides me with the default event for that object, which isn't the one that I want in this case, it gives me the open event of the workbook. So to select the, uh, the new sheet event, I'll need to use the drop down list at the top right hand corner. So if I select from this drop down list the new sheet event, there it is, just scroll up a little bit, um, that will generate the, the event handler for that particular event. I can then delete the one that I don't need, the workbook open event, and then add some basic code into this procedure, which will be triggered automatically whenever the user creates a new sheet. So for this simple example, all we're going to do is change the value of a single cell on the worksheet and then also maybe change the background colours of the cells. So let's add a little, simple little bit of code to achieve that. We'll say range a one dot value and we'll put in a simple little string of, little string of text that says created on followed by concatenating the, the result of the date function. So it tells what date the, the worksheet was created on. And then we'll change the background colour of all the cells on the worksheet. So we'll say cells dot interior dot colour equals and then let's see uh, RGB pink. Why not? Um, choose a different colour if you like, if you're following along. So the point of, a, of an event procedure is that you don't choose when to run the code. This should happen automatically when this event is triggered. So to test if it works, I'll simply need to head back into Excel and I'll need to create a new worksheet. So let's click the plus symbol down at the bottom in this version of Excel 2013 and we should see immediately, as soon as I do that, the code is triggered to populate cell A1 and change the background colour of all the cells. And that will continue to happen each time I insert a new sheet in this workbook. So exactly the same thing happens every single time. In a very similar way, we can also add code to the events of a single worksheet. So let's say for example we wanted something to happen every time we click onto a different cell in sheet 1. To do that we need to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then we'll need to double click on the Sheet 1 object this time to access its events and again we'll be presented with a code page with drop down lists at the top left and right. Starting with the drop down list at the top left again we're going to choose the correct object which in this case will be Worksheet rather than Workbook and that generates the default event handler for that particular object type as well. In this case it's the one that I want, it's the Worksheet Selection Change event which is triggered every time the selection changes, so i.e. every time you click onto a different cell. Um, it also passes back a reference to the range that's been selected with this target parameter. You can access the other events of a worksheet in the same way as for a workbook, using the drop down list at the top right hand corner should you need them, but in this case we'll stick with the selection change event. So the code we're going to add to this then is simply to change the background colour of a cell. So we'll say, um, sorry, beg pardon, rather than range, we're going to reference the target parameter. So we'll say target dot interior dot colour and we'll make that equal to, let's see, the, one of the RGB colours. Um, let's go with RGB coral and see what colour that generates. So again, the idea of an event is you don't trigger the code yourself. You don't choose when to run it by running it yourself you simply make this event happen. So to make that work back in for this example, head back into Excel on sheet 1 and then just change the selection, i.e. click on a different cell. So there we go, as soon as we do that it gives us, um, or it runs the code that we added to that event handler. So a wonderful useful drawing tool type thing in Excel, how marvellous. Um, admittedly those two things are fairly pointless examples, but it's enough to demonstrate the principle that 
an event procedure is something that's, that happens automatically as users work in a workbook. So we've seen events for both a workbook and a worksheet so far. What we're going to move on to now are events for the entire application itself. So to demonstrate how to access the events of the application, we're going to start with a brand new blank workbook. So I've created a brand new blank workbook here and just saved it as a macro-enabled workbook with a new name. And then to access the application's events, we need to head back to the Visual Basic Editor. Now the initial problem that we have with doing this is that unlike the workbook and the worksheets, we have no direct access to the application object, so we can't simply double click on it and start selecting events from a drop down list. The application definitely does have events however, and in fact if you wanted to see them, you can head to the view menu and choose the object browser, and then in the list of classes on the left hand side, find the application class and select it. And then in the list on the right-hand side, the members of the application object, you can see the little lightning flash symbols indicating that these are events. So if you select each one of these, it'll tell you what the, the fact that it is an event down at the bottom. Um, and you'll find there's a couple of interesting sounding ones in here. So the after calculate one is, is one that's unique to the application. So that will happen after everything in the, in the application has been finished, has finished calculating. And there's also an interesting one here called new workbook, which is triggered every time you insert a brand new blank workbook. And that's something you can't access via um, the workbooks events or the worksheets events. This is something that is unique to the application. So should we want to be able to access this, we're going to have to do a little bit more work to write some code that gives us access to the application with its events enabled. Now we have a couple of choices for where we can write this code, but a reasonably sensible choice and a simple choice at this stage is just to use the this workbook object. So if we double click on that to open up the code page for the this workbook object. We're not going to do as we did before and use the drop down lists to select workbook. What we're going to start by doing is declaring a variable that can hold a reference to an application object. So somewhere in this in this module we're going to declare a private variable and we're going to call this something like uh, Excel app as application. So that declares a variable that can hold a reference to essentially an Excel application object. Now the problem with doing this is it doesn't give us any, any um, access to the object's events at this stage. You can see in the drop down at the top left hand corner again, I've still only got access to the workbook and the workbook object's events. So to enable this variable to respond to events, I need to add the with event keywords, sorry, the with events keyword to the declaration. So we're going to say private with events. Excel app as application. And simply having done that now, if I use the drop down list at the top left hand corner again, you'll see that I have access to a new object. And if I select it, it will give me access to the events of that object. The default event for the application is the one I was talking about briefly earlier on, the new workbook event. And that's the first one that we're going to write some code to handle. Again, just to demonstrate the principle of how this works, we're going to do something quite simple in the new workbook event. All we're going to do is change the value of a couple of cells. So we're going to reference the new workbook that's being created using the WB parameter. And then what we'll do is we'll refer to worksheets sheet one in that workbook. We can pretty much always guarantee there will be a sheet one object in each new worksheet we create. And then we're going to refer to range A1 in there and we'll change its value so that it says something similar to what we said earlier on, in fact identical to what we said earlier on. Let's say created on and then concatenate the result of the date function. Um, and then we'll also do a similar thing for range A2. So I'm going to quickly copy and paste that line and then just modify it ever so slightly. So we'll say range A2 and we'll make this one equal to created by and then return the username of the person running the code. So we can achieve that by using one, uh, the environ function which returns one of the Windows environment variables. And the particular environment variable we want to reference or return a value from this time is called username. So that returns the username of the person logged in running the code at the, that point in time. So having written that code out, one thing just to quickly note is that this won't actually work yet. So if I go back to Excel and then try to create a brand new workbook, which I can do either by clicking the file menu and choosing new, or even quicker, pressing Ctrl and N for new on the keyboard, you'll see that the new workbook that gets created doesn't actually have any values in cells A1 and A2 at all. And the reason that's, that's the case is because at this point, I haven't actually set what my Excel app variable should refer to. I know that it can hold a reference to the application or an, uh, an object of the application class, but it doesn't actually point to an application yet. So that's the next job. Now the instruction that sets our Excel app variable to reference the application is incredibly straightforward to write. It's just a case of choosing where and when it should happen. I think a fairly good choice is to make that happen whenever we open up this current workbook. 
So we're going to actually use one of the workbooks events. As we saw earlier on, we can access the workbook events using the drop-down list at the top left-hand corner. So we can choose workbook. And then we want the uh, the open event, which is, happens to be the default event, happily. So we get provided with that one automatically. And the only line of code we're going to write in there is we're going to say set Excel app equals application. So that simply sets our variable to refer to the application object, the existing one, and it enables the events so it can, can respond to events, which means that now from that point on, whenever we open up the workbook, the applications events are enabled, and the only one we've written any code for at this point, of course, is a new workbook event. So every time we create a new workbook in the application, this code will happen. Phew, so what we've got to do to make this work then now is first of all, save all the code we've written. Now we need to trigger the open event of this specific workbook. So that means going back into Excel and then closing down this workbook. So we can go to the file menu and just choose close. And then we can head back to the file menu and use hopefully the recently used workbooks list to open up Excel VBA app events. We'll need to enable macros. Now you, you may be presented with this, uh, this message in one of two different ways, either as a dialog box like this, if you already have the VB editor open, or if you've closed the VB editor down as well, you'll get a little bar appearing at the top of the worksheet. Um, so if you uh, if you click the enable macros or enable content button, whatever it says on that button, to make sure your code runs, and then we should find now that all of our code for the application events is enabled automatically. So once again, I'm going to hold down the control key and press N for a new workbook, and this time we should see that we get this code running automatically. And that should happen every single time if I press Control N again, I get another new workbook with yet exactly the same code uh, running and, 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 and populating those cells. So just to close down those workbooks and don't bother saving the changes, back to the VB editor, that's the entire set of code you effectively need in order to enable events for the application object. Now, although the approach of adding your application events to the This Workbook module works quite easily, it doesn't require an awful lot of code, one small downside to this approach is that you can end up with quite a lot of code in the, uh, the Workbook module. If you imagine adding code for all of the Workbook events and all of the application events, you can imagine ending up with an awful lot of messy looking code in here. So it's often quite nice to be able to separate out the application events from the Workbook events. And one way to achieve that is by using something called a class module. Now we've covered class modules in quite a lot of detail in another video in this series, um, so we're not going to get into, into how class modules themselves work in too much detail here, just enough to understand how to make this approach work. So to start with we'll need to insert a class module into the project, and you can do that much like inserting a normal module, right click somewhere inside the project itself, and then choose insert, but this time choose class module. Once we've done that, we should give the class module a sensible name, just like you would any other module, I suppose. So instead of calling it class one, I'm going to call this one um, event app. What we can then do is declare a variable with events in this class module, just as we did in the this workbook module earlier on. So I'm going to declare a private with events Excel app as application. Next, I'd like to make it so that each time I create a new instance of this class, I set the Excel app variable to be equal to the application. So it's essentially the same code as we've just added to the This Workbook uh, module in the Workbook Open event. We're going to set Excel app equal to the application. I want to do this whenever somebody creates a new instance of this class, so we need to use an event of the class called Initialize. So to access that, again, we'll use the drop down list at the top of the code page. So first of all, at the top left hand corner, we'll use the class object and that will provide us with the initialize event, which happens to be the one we want. And in fact, there's only one other event of a class module, which is called terminate, when somebody destroys an instance of the class. So we'll stick with the initialize event here. And as I say, all we're going to do is we're going to set Excel app equals application. Now it's simply a case of adding all of the event handlers to the class module to handle the events of the application itself. So we can do that in a similar way, again, using the drop down list at the top left hand corner, choose the Excel app object, and that will again provide us with the default event for the object, which is new workbook. We've got access to all of the other events of the application from the drop-down list at the top right. But the nice thing about this list now is it's not contaminated with all the events of the workbook object as we saw earlier on. So just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to double click back on the this workbook object and then copy and paste these two lines from my uh, new workbook event in the previous example back to my class module event app by double clicking and then paste those two lines straight in again.
I could add more event handlers, of course, just by selecting from this list in the top right hand corner, but I think just to demonstrate the principle, the new workbook event will be sufficient. What I then need to do is go back to the This Workbook module and then start tidying things up. So instead of having my event handler for the new workbook event in the workbook object, I can simply delete that because all that's contained in my class now. I also don't need to set my Excel app to be equal to, to an application or equal to the application because that's done in the class module as well. And nor do I need to declare a variable that is um, uh, with events. So let me get rid of that one as well. We do need to do one small little bit of code in this um, open event of the workbook. So essentially what we need to do is make sure that whenever we, we open up the workbook, we create a new instance of our event app class. So to make that work, we'll declare a new variable inside the, uh, the workbooks module, which will be a private variable, and we'll call it Excel app, just for consistency, I suppose, more than anything else. But rather than holding a reference to an application object, what this one will be allowed to do is hold a reference to an instance of our event app class. We'll then use the workbook open event just as we did earlier on to create the new instance of that class. And to make that work we'll say set Excel app equals new event app. So in doing so when that line of code runs it will trigger the initialize event in the class module itself so it sets our private variable in here Excel app to be equal to the application and that will then enable all of the events whose event handlers we've written code for so of course that's again just just the one the new workbook event this is obviously requires a little bit more effort to do than the initial example but the advantage of doing this is that your this workbook module can be nice and tidy so you can focus on just adding events for the workbook object rather than mixing up the workbook method with the workbook events and the application events so just to demonstrate that all this will work, we're going to save the, uh, the, the, uh, the workbook again, head back into Excel, and then close down this workbook. And then we're going to reopen it. So back to the file menu and choose to reopen the, uh, the app events workbook. Enable macros if you're asked to. And we should find again that if we create a brand new workbook by pressing Ctrl N, the, uh, the same code still runs for the workbook or the new workbook event. So there we go, there's the basics of how you get access to the events of the Excel application rather than just the workbook and the worksheet objects. Hopefully you'll be able to extrapolate from those, those basic principles and do more sophisticated things yourself in the real world. Hope you found it useful, thanks for watching, see you next time. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.